Courage Bowen. This is um, Cross Gunnan um, at Lambister. Um, this is a beef and sheep farm, a family run farm. Um, we've got Farming Connect here giving a talk on suckling cows. So I'd like to um, welcome everybody here today. What uh, I was asked to do is speak a little bit about the suckler cow industry and I'm not going to go into any topic in great depth. I think what Mentor a Business wants to find out is what subject matter you want, want to discuss at a later meeting and we can probably go into anything in greater depth at that time. But the first slide I've put up here is just what I think is the position with the Welsh uh, beef industry at the moment. We're re rearing about 86% of calves. That's 86 calves reared for every 100 cows to the bull, whereas we should be rearing about 93%. This has cost the Welsh industry 27,000 calves a year. Now, you can put your own value in what that 27,000 cow calves are worth. They're worth. It's certainly worth over, uh, nowadays, a thousand pound a piece. So we are hemorrhaging a huge amount of money from the Welsh beef industry. In Scotland and in England, it's a very similar picture. We're not rearing nearly enough calves per 100 cows to the bull. The number of barn cows are high. What's the reasons for barren cows? Age of the cows, some people like keeping cows too old. They do lose fertility after a certain age. How you manage the heifers, we don't manage heifers well. I'll come back onto that in a minute. Disease, nutrition and the bull and the previous calving. If you've got a disastrous previous calving, you have an awful job to get the cow back into calf again. What's the reasons for being a cow being slow to take the bull? Once again, the bull, the lazy bull, subfertile bulls, I'll mention a little bit on that, the heifer management, nutrition, disease, and calving difficulty again. And as you can see, when I put up the barners, when I put up the slow to calve, you've got the similar common factors coming through them all. And the reasons for calf deaths, once again the bull, over big calves at birth, cow condition, overfit at calving time, and disease. So once again, <coughs> we've got these common factors. Very few of us actually follow these targets. 94% uh, of cows should be rearing calves. What's the advantages of, of compact calvings? And I know the farm here said they are trying to get the majority of cows calved in April and May, so you're targeting a nine-week calving period. So there is advantages of, of short calving periods. More so if you're actually selling groups of suckled calves, because you've got more even batches to actually sell. If you've got a close calving period, you've actually got a fertile suckler herd. So you, you'll, you've more chance of having a profitable suckler herd. It's a lot easier management. It's a lot easier to feed your cattle accurately when you've got them calving close together. You've actually got less disease problems. The more protracted the calving period, the more the build-up of the disease as the calving period goes on. As I said, you can feed them more accurately. The other thing is we are drawn out calving. If you're calving mainly in April and May, your cow's in the right condition. But if you're then calving into June and July, those cows are then getting fitter and fitter on grass you end up with more difficult calving on them. And the, the, the shorter your calving period, the less actual labor requirements there are. You often hear of people losing calves because it's all these, they weren't expecting that cow to calve, etc. And the average percentage reared in Wales on the farms is quite good, around about 91%, as against a target of 94. And these figures we'd actually produce for those farms in a lead table, so they'd be anonymous results. But Manchester United would be the top and Wigan Wanderers at the bottom, and you'd hope as Wigan you'd want to be actually improving. If your herd was at the bottom of the lead table, you'd be wanting to get gradually upwards. But when you look at the calving spread of these farms, the average farm, <coughs> the first three weeks, 30% of cows are calving. By the end of six weeks, we've got 61% of cows are calved. In a normal target suckler situation, 90% of your cows should have calved by six weeks. So our actual calving spread and performance is poor. So we have got problems with fertility in our suckler herds. And why is it so important? If I looked at the 
CAF rearing percentage, which is the norm for the UK of about 85%, with a CAF price at 180 pence for a suckle CAF at weaning time, this is at weaning time, remember, is worth £436. If you can improve that CAF rearing percentage to 94, and at the same time get your calving period tightened up, come weaning time, your average weight of your calves will be heavier if you've got a tight calving pattern, that's worth £10,000 a year, or almost £100,000 over a 10-year period for a 100 suckler cow herd. Now that's money we're hemorrhaging in the industry, and we don't need to. That's money that you could have in your actual pocket. And we've come up with five key principles to sort out the fertility issue in the UK suckler herd. It's nutrition, management of the cow condition, and that comes down to silage, silage quality, condition score in your cows, mineral nutrition, etc. The second one is making sure that the bulls are sound and fertile. Making sure that you avoid these difficult calvings. Because difficult calvings have a double whammy, of course, because you can lose the calf. Management of heifers, I'll do a little bit on that, and I'll do a little bit on herd health. But if you can hit those five key principles, you'll start improving the fertility and the profitability of your suckler herd. If I asked, showed you a whole heap of pictures of bulls and asked you to pick the best one, <coughs> you probably wouldn't be able to do it. But as stockmen, you all go to bull sales or to buy a bull, and you all manage to buy a bull. So you all know how to pick a good bull. What your eye doesn't tell you, which of these bulls are different calving bulls? Which of those bulls would breed the milkiest daughters if you were keeping your own replacements? Which of those bulls would breed the calves with a better shape? They tell you nothing. So your eye actually misleads you, because what your eye is telling you to do is buy condition. You're buying condition when you see a bull, because what, what you're seeing at the, at the time is a combination of genetics, and that's the only bit of that animal that is passed to the next generation, is genetics. The rest of it is made up of environmental issues like management, how healthy the bull is, how well he's fed, etc. And the breed societies have worked closely together now to produce EBVs in a standard format which are very easily to understand. Anything to the right hand side is better than average, anything to the left hand side is worse than average. So if a good chart matches the looks of the bull, what you like to see in a bull, you know you're on a winner. What I'm saying, don't buy a bull just entirely on looks alone. Your next problem with the bull, the bulls do create problems as well as creating difficult calving problems. But we know that 20% of bulls are liable to be subfertile. Uh, so you've got infertile bulls which won't work at all, and you've got subfertile ones which you'll see serving the cows, and then the cows will come back into season again three weeks later, and then six weeks later they'll come back round again. Normally bulls should be at least 60% fertile at each service. So you shouldn't have more than 6% barren at 9 weeks of age and 2% barren at 12 weeks of age. A lot of people, to get rid of the chance of having uh, subfertile bulls, will tend to rotate bulls. But that's a problem. All you're doing by rotating bulls is masking the problem. And I put up an example here of a, a, a 60 cow herd with two bulls. One of the bulls is will get 60% in calf in three weeks' time, in a three-week period. The second bull will only get 30% of cows in calf in a three-week period. So you'll know straight away that the first bull, by the time you go to six weeks, has got 25 out of 30 in calf. The second bull will only have 15 out of 30 in calf. So what you do, you swap the two bulls around, and then bull one manages to pick up an awful lot. He gets 13 or the 15 that the second bull didn't get. But the second bull only gets two or the five that the first bull had. So what you've got is after nine weeks, 17% barren and only 45% due in the first three weeks. 
But the first bull had an awful lot of them in calf in the first three weeks. So some fertile bulls do create a problem to you, and you will end up with an awful lot of barren cows through subfertile bulls. And remember, I said 20% of the bulls on a worldwide basis, this is, uh, are subfertile. In Scotland, we've done a similar exercise on bulls and found something like 30% of bulls are actually subfertile. And all of you, well, I would say all of you, a lot of you make a mistake. How many of you go and buy a bull when you actually need the bull? And you're buying a bull that's much overfit. Because any of you be that breed sales will see that these bulls aren't in working condition. They need to be slimmed down before you actually turn them out to the actual cows. You should actually be buying your bull months in advance, at least three months in advance of needing them, so you can bring them onto the diet that you've got in the farm and bring them down in plain and nutrition and actually get a fertility check done on them. And how do you assess the fertility of the bull? You would just get a vet in to do a, a, a check on a locomotion check because a lot of the bulls actually have got musculoskeletal problems, sore backs or legs, and quite often it's caused by being pushed too, too fast at a young age. And this is why they need to be gradually re reduced in condition rather than stuck straight out of the cows. He would also check the testicles, the penis, etc., of this animal. Hands up how many people have done a semen test in a bull? One or two, yeah. <clears throat> Young bulls bought for the first time should always be checked. We, we, we did a Farm and Connect farm yesterday uh, down about Newcastle Emlyn. He checked his young bull and found the semen quality was low. He bought it one week, tested it the next week, semen quality was low. Tested it a month later, semen test quality was very high. The bull actually served about 15 out of 18 heifers within three weeks. So he was working well. But quite often, if you buy a bull, stick him straight out with the cows, that bull maybe won't get a lot of them in calf. The other problem is the bull, you know, had served all your cows last year. You expect them to serve them this year. Do you know? Has he been lame during the winter? If he's lame, he might have had a high temperature. Has he had an infection during the winter? You don't know. You actually need to check out these bulls. And a lot of vets now have this electro ejaculation equipment where they can test bulls for semen quality and, uh, and, and how mobile the semen, uh, semen is, etc. So, so that's the bull side covered. We now want to look at the female side and, and, and the problem they're actually causing. And I think one of the big problems we've got in this country now is we're moving, we've got the wrong type of cows. We've, we've been breeding cows with more and more muscling and losing some of the maternal characteristics. If you had to build, like a Meccano said, if you had to build the ideal suckler cow, what characteristics would you put into her? There's a whole list of them. Cow characteristics, fertility. You want a calf every 365 days of the year. We need hardiness and foraging ability, and somebody said they have to live in, f in fresh air. We need to have cows that utilize grassland a lot more, and, and forage of variable quality. We need to have suckler cows at milk. We need to have suckler, suckler cows that live, that are sound on feet, and have good, uh, good and correct others. Yes, we need suckler cows with less labour in farms. We need cows that are, uh, that are very quiet. And cows that calve on their own. Too many cows still need assistance. And we need a, a good health status on these animals. Uh, I put a question mark in call value because I think call value is a red herring. A lot of people say, why do you keep big cows? Oh, they're worth more than...